Hello everybody, this is Brando McWillie, and I thought I'd bring a couple of things out to show you today. Um, mainly, I'm um, probably going to end up doing a three video session on this, um, and um, taking a look at um, a couple different farms that I like, and then also maybe a video comparing the two because they're so popular with each other. Um, the first one that you see here, um, this is the Ruger 1022. And then I think, you know, pretty much its main competitor uh, would be the Marlin Model 60. And the Marlin Model 60 and the Ruger 1022 more than likely was probably everybody's first 22 rifle when they were a kid growing up or as an adult. Or, you know, if you were going to go buy a 22 rifle um, nine times out of ten, I would imagine, and this is me imagining, that uh, uh, you would buy one of these two. So, <clears throat> um, Let's take a look in this first part video, um, taking a look at the Ruger 1022 by itself, and I'm going to remove the Marlin 60 here, and we'll just take a look at the 1022. So, the Ruger 1022 is a very special firearm for me, um, in the sense that um, it was my first. My first rifle that I've ever owned was a 1022. Um, I remember, now I'm 38 now. Um, I remember when I was like 18 or 17 or something like that. I've never owned a rifle before. Um, I asked my mother, you know, I said, you know, I'm 18 years old. Um, can I go buy a rifle? And she kind of thought about it for a second, and um, she said, sure, why not, you know. So, um, you know, I was actually an 18-year-old that asked for permission, you know, back in the day. And I think that was, you know, being 2011, I think that was by 1990, 1989, sometime, sometime in that range. And the first rifle I bought was this one right here. Not this exact one. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I still had um, my original 1022, but I don't. Um, but this one um, is one that I've picked up along the way because I kind of had some nostalgia for my 1022 I had back when I was 18 years old. And I can remember just having the most fun with that thing. It was the only rifle that I had up until about the age of 20 or 21. Um, in which then I acquired a Remington Model 700 and a 243 caliber. And uh, sadly, you know, I've got rid of that one as well. A uh, little story about me, I, I was in the military and um, needed money and sold both rifles um, in order to get money. Um, and I guess that's why people sell rifles to begin with. But, um, you know, what I was going to talk to you today about, not was my nostalgia of the 1022, but maybe a little bit about what's different about the 1022 that I remember back in the early 90s or late 80s uh, versus the 1022 that you can get today. You know, basically the gun, a lot of the things for the gun is unchanged. There's some things there that has changed that I noticed a little bit, um, and I'll kind of point that out, but um, kind of give you an idea um, uh, about the differences between some older models versus the newer models, at least as far as that I can see. Uh, one thing that I, that I noticed off the bat, you know, as far as the 1022 is concerned, and I guess what I'll do right quick is I'll just go ahead and pull this magazine out and safety check this. You know, I don't like doing that kind of crap. I hate when people um, fuss on YouTube about safety checking your weapon. You know, we're we're here. We know what we're doing. So please leave us alone. Anyway, sorry. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that the buttstock is a shiny plastic. Now I don't remember it being a shiny plastic before. Um, I thought it was more of a metallic if I remember correctly and people please comment if I'm telling you wrong there. Uh, but one thing that I did notice um, that I think is accurate is that the ring uh, that attaches around the barrel and the stock is now plastic or a polymer or something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's always been the case uh, I didn't recall ever that ever being plastic. I remember trying to take that off of my old 1022, and then was afraid I was going to scratch the barrel and stuff like that. And that may be the reason why they changed it to a plastic. Um, anyway, um, when I was a kid, when I say kid, I mean 18. When I was a kid and I had my 1022, I had the 30 round clip for it. Matter of fact, uh, or clip magazine, excuse me. Um, matter of fact, I had. Um, a few of those 30 round magazines and I would put that inside this 1022 and my favorite pastime actually was blowing up cinder blocks. I would go to my grandmother's who had a lot of land at the time and I would sit there and set up cinder blocks 
And to me, it just looked like um, World War II or Vietnam, people were just hitting this uh, urban warfare and hitting the buildings and having all the dust blow and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, very awesome in that regard. Uh, I've also remember taking a couple of squirrels with the old one. Um, and I also remember taking mistletoe out of a tree with it. You know, um, I used to work at a golf course when I was about that age. And the owner, I said, you know, we we're having a Christmas party. I said, you know, you may get some mistletoe out of the tree. And um, she goes, yeah, sure. She says, how are you going to do it? And I said, well, I've got a, a 22. I'm just going to shoot it out. And he says, sure, no problem. And uh, back in the day, you can tell the difference between now and then because there was golfers on the golf course um, kind of underneath where I was shooting to get that mistletoe, but no one seemed to really care. You know, it's kind of interesting how things have changed today. If I went to a golf course today and start blowing out mistletoe around December, I'm sure I would get a lot of complaints or a lot of, uh, a lot of issues. Um, so for me, uh, back in the day, the purpose of this particular rifle um, was basically a, a plinking rifle. Um, uh, you know, I, I would um, um, take it out and I would target shoot and I would plink and I would just blow stuff up. At 18 years old, you're interested in blowing stuff up. And um, that's basically what I did. The more rounds, the better um, that I could fit in there. I think at the time they even had like a 50 round mag you could put in there. And I never did buy one of those. But, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they were just so much fun um, uh, to shoot. And they still are. And the cool thing about it is that the 1022 has been so popular is that the, um, uh, the idea of having aftermarket parts is just a, a, a massive thing. And there's so many things you can do with a 1022. You can make this a, a tactical 22, if you want to call it that, by putting folding stocks, AR-15 style stocks on them, um, really decking it out, putting tripods, not tripods, but a bipod, um, just doing all sorts of things with this. And if you wanted versatility between this one and the Model 60, I think the Gen 22 would win hands down uh, in that regards. Um, not that I'm comparing the two in this particular video, but... Um, I just think that uh, um, the, the amount of modifications you can do with a 1022 just outweighs any other 22 rifle out there. It's just you can't do it. You can't do it with a Model 795. You can't do it with a Model 60. Um, although they are, they do make a 25 round magazine for the 720, uh, 795. You just can't. You just can't do the same thing you can with a 1022. So for me, bottom line is is that that this particular rifle. Um, being that it's a 1022 has a special place for me simply because um, it was the first rifle that I ever owned. Not the first gun, mind you, the first rifle. The first gun I ever owned, of course, was a Red Ryder BB gun, you know, by Daisy. And uh, I thought about picking one of those up one day, too, um, just to have and like to pass some, that kind of stuff down to my kids as well. So that would be a lot of fun. Uh, one other thing about the uh, 1022 that I forgot to mention is going through some of the stuff that's new versus old is that, um, from what I understand, that the, the new Rugers um, come with a rail that you can attach. Now the cool thing about this rail is that it has the 22 size bead, or not bead, but uh, rail system, or the weaver size rail, and you're not going to be able to see it probably, but there are two ridges on that rail, and the first ridge is the same size as, say, like on the top of the Marlins, or the Henry's, or something like that, that would fit a 22 rimfire type scope, which this is, by the way, with upgraded rings. Um, or, um, you know, you can fit a full-size Picatinny rail. The scope that's riding on this right now is a Bushnell rimfire scope. Um, I've got this off of another gun, and ha just recently had it put on, so I, I just figured I had the gun out, I'd do the video. Um, but... Um, all the reviews, Chuck Hawks has done a review on this scope and, and you know, pretty positive reviews on a, on a $25 to $30 scope that you can get at Walmart. That comes with rings, mind you. Although I had better rings and I figured I'd put the better rings on there um, from, from another a rifle. Um, as you do a lot of trading, you accumulate parts, which is a good thing. So, with that being said, you know, if you, if you don't own a 22 and you're looking for your first and your primary purpose is to plink and to have fun, then I think the Ruger 1022 will do you just fine. Another valid option to the Ruger 1022 would be the Marlin 795 or the Marlin Model 60. And the difference between the Marlin 60 and the 795 is one is tube fed and the other one is magazine fed. 
and you can watch my Marlin video here in a second and see the difference. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. This is just my take on the Ruger 1022. Um, sometimes I like senseless videos as far as uh, just people talking about it um, and comparing the two um, or comparing rifles about what their own opinion is because you know you hear stuff about size and weight all day long. Uh, but what do people think about it? You know, so uh, that's what I think about it. I think it's a wonderful rifle, and I'm very happy to own it. And um, hope you will too. So, if you like my videos, please subscribe and uh, stop a uh, drop a comment and say hello. I would appreciate it. Thanks.